now the next clinical is <coughs> varicose veins and ulcers what occurs in the varicose veins if the valves in the perforating veins or at the termination of superficial veins become incompetent incompetent defective veins become high pressure leakage and high pressure in deep veins produced by muscular contraction is transmitted to the superficial veins what are perforating veins first we see that perforating veins are those veins that connect superficial veins with the deep veins when the high pressure in deep veins which is produced by the muscular contraction is transmitted to the superficial veins back flow of blood occurs from deep to superficial veins this causes incompetency in incompetency in superficial veins in superficial veins which causes dilation dilatation of superficial veins and it causes gradual degeneration of walls of veins and producing varicose veins and varicose ulcers these are deep veins and it is superficial vein now due to the incompetency of valves the blood which is going toward the heart due to high pressure leaks back flow of blood occurs and it is pressure transmitted to the superficial veins the superficial veins are dilated dilated causing varicose veins and it also causes ulcers this was the varicose veins and ulcers now the next clinical is trindelenburg's test previously there was a trindelenburg's sign but this is trindelenburg's test trindelenburg's test is used to find out the leakage or defect in a patient with varicose veins only superficial veins and perforating veins are tested by the trindelenburg's test so first we test the superficial veins to test the superficial veins a patient is made to lie down and the veins are impeded by raising the legs now the pressure is applied at the saphenofemoral junction and the patient is made to stand up quickly to test superficial veins pressure is released from the saphenofemoral junction and the quick filling of veins indicates incompetency of superficial veins this was the test to find out the varicose veins to test only superficial veins and perforating veins now the next is to test perforating veins to test perforating veins the pressure at saphenofemoral junction is not removed is not released but it is maintained for a minute and the gradual filling of veins indicates the incompetency of perforating veins this was the test to check perforating veins now the treatment treatment include sclerosing injection laser treatment or tight socks or stocks stocks compress legs to add venous return
नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्लिनिकल इज परथीज टेस्ट दिस इज द टेस्ट टू चेक द वेरी कोज इन वेरी सीज इन डीप वेन्स टू चेक द वेरी कोज इन इन डीप वेन्स अ टर्निकट इज टाइड अराउंड अपर पार्ट ऑफ थाई टाइटली द पेशेंट वॉक्स क्विकली फॉर अ वाइल विद द टर्निकट इन प्लेस नाउ इफ परफोरेटिंग एंड डीप वेन्स और और नॉर्मल वेरी कोज वेन्स श्रिंक if they are blocked if perforating and deep veins are blocked varicose veins become more distended this is the test to, to check the varicose in deep veins it was perthes test now the next clinical is elephantiasis what occurs in elephantiasis lymphatic obstruction caused by parasite filaria it is a parasite filaria occurs in lower limb this results in great hypertrophy of skin and subcutaneous tissues it is called elephantiasis it is inflammation and lymphatic obstruction now the next clinical is coxa vera normally neck shaft angle in child it is 150 and in adult is 127 degree neck shaft angle is between the neck and the shaft of the femur now it is the normal angle now we see the abnormality in the neck shaft angle because normal neck shaft angle is in child 150 degree and in adult 127 degree now coxa vera it is a clinical condition in which there is decrease in the normal neck shaft angle and it causes difficulty in walking this was the coxa vera now the next clinical is related to neck shaft angle coxa valga in this condition neck shaft angle is increased than normal neck shaft angle it also causes difficulty difficulty in walking if now we see that if neck shaft angle is decreased neck shaft angle is decreased head to move towards the shaft more close but in the coxa volga head head and neck moves away from the shaft and the angle is increased this angle is increased and it causes difficulty in walking these both condition cause difficulty in the walking this was the coxa vera and coxa volga now the next clinical is referred pain what is referred pain in some region of the body because of the same nerve supply pain in one pain in one part of the body is transmitted to the other part of the body because of the both two regions having the same nerve supply now we see that because of same nerve supply pain in the hip joint is referred to the knee joint and the nerve supplying is femoral nerve there are also other examples of referred pain these examples are pain in the gall bladder is referred to the tip of right shoulder first the second is the pain in the or disease causing pain in the spleen 
is referred to the tip of left shoulder and the third the pain of the pericardium of the heart is referred to the medial side of arm there are also many other examples of referred pain and this is the most referred pain most important clinical condition this was the referred pain